Hello, procrastinators, and welcome to the NerdCube Podcast, episode two. Woo! Yeah, yeah, it's the uh, time for the sequel. <laughs> Won't be quite yeah. as good as the first one, but yeah. you know, it will have the characters that you know and love. Well, it has Dan and me. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, so, did, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm so th- sorry you're I, not me. <laughs> I am too. But, you know, talking of things being really rubbish, um, as well as me, <laughs> I got the world's worst fortune cookie the other day. Did you? What did it say? It it said, Vous à la près de la dame à tout élément sur de ce... Was it written in drunk? And then I realised that it's got French on one side and English on the other. Which seems <laughs> weird. Like, at least with a fortune cookie, if it's got Chinese, or what I assume is Chinese, because I'm <laughs> racist when it comes to <laughs> writing, uh, uh, that sort of writing, um, <laughs> like, it feels like that's fine, that they've got English on one side and uh, uh, Chinese on the other side, though it could be Japanese or something else for all I know. Korean. Or Korean. Korean's the more square one, Japanese rounded, and Chinese is somewhere in the middle. That's how I try to remember it. So, um, but yeah, but French seems a bit weird. But, okay, so here's the English translation You are buying dinner for all tomorrow night. <laughs> that is a crap <laughs> fortune cookie. <laughs> That is a fortune cookie made by someone trying to gouge you for money. <laughs> well, they hand you that one in particular. Yeah, you have this one. I once got a fortune that was blank. Like, it, was, it wasn't it was completely blank. You could see, like, <laughs> the top of the layer had been, like, sliced off. So it's obviously just been cut wrong. So there's just a bit yeah. of text. There's me going, oh, someone's now got, like, two fortunes somewhere, and I have none. <laughs> Maybe you just get to write your own. Oh, that would have been a good idea. And it comes true. It's like, what will buy dinner for me tomorrow? Yeah! (laughs) So, yes, welcome to the the sequel of the podcast. We think the last one went well, so we've got this new one. Yes. Uh, You can't say yes, that's a microtransaction. Oh, okay. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've crashed. Oh, dear. (laughs) Ubisoft sponsored this video. God, could you imagine if Ubisoft wanted to sponsor anything of ours? It was was interesting, because, like, last week we said... Ubisoft, we were, we picked at Ubisoft because Assassin's Creed 5, we were worried they'd release spoilers and were yeah. complaining about the fact that they hadn't hidden things from us. Whereas it yeah. turns out they did hide the fact that this was an, uh, a pre-alpha release yeah. that they were putting out rather than a finished game. It does, yeah. I mean, because their, their, their response to all this They did has keep been... that secret. <laughs> <laughs> their response to this has been, well, next time we're going to release beta versions. And there's me going, well, next time you still work on the fucking problem. This is what you've done this time. Just labeling it differently. Beta. Labeling things doesn't make it better. Well, apart from if it says, like, contains alligators. That's always yeah. a good label. I don't know. I, that, it's only the, on things that actually have alligators in you can't say yeah. this is a useful label i'll use this everywhere because <laughs> that dilutes the effectiveness of the label it, it would make you think twice about opening a cookie jar wouldn't it no. <laughs> it just contains alligators no it would yeah but i would fill it with lego alligators i would ah that would be brilliant it's like it's like that time where we lived together I, there was like uh, i left a bowl upside down uh, on the kitchen floor with a sign on it saying, um, you can only move this bowl if you kill what's under it. Which I thought was I, quite fun. We did not touch that. <laughs> that that's still there when we left. <laughs> you know what was under there? Lego alligator. There we go. <laughs> our Lego spider did actually... I did put our Lego spiders under a gla- a, a upside turned glass. Yeah, I, I ended up chucking those away because they kept making me jump. Like, that's the only Lego I've ever got rid of, was Lego Spider. We had this little tiny I, plastic Lego Spider, and I got rid of it. I also hate them in um, the Lego games. Yeah. Uh, particularly in Marvel, the Lego Marvel one. Because they move up and down, but in the foreground, b- beyond yeah. where you're looking. Which means they always make you startle and jump. <laughs> and it's just one of those ones where you're like, ah. 
it's, it's just like, don't um, put that in your game, please. It's, it's like in a, with um, Resident Evil on the DS. I would never played Resident Evil, and I thought, oh, I'll give that a go. And there were a few sort of jump scares, but especially the dogs jumping through the window, which is well set up because you go up and down this corridor a few times. Then on one of the times back, dogs smash through the window and it makes you jump. That was great. But at, at one point, it, uh, a spider drops down, but it drops down in the foreground onto ground that you can't yet see or something. And I just threw my DS. I, it just went away. The two screens separated. I never saw it again. Uh, I don't miss R. that. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. in peace. So what do we have to talk about today? I do want to point out, we're not sponsored by Nintendo. Nintendo? Ubisoft. I'm not sponsored by Nintendo Ubisoft. either. There's, there's, we are, there's we are not sponsored by... <laughs> we you, On YouTube, I, I think they're still trying to hope that youtube is just a small fad that will go away soon um yeah is it, could you imagine how shit i am if i was like i actually i've subliminally been messaging it that's what i've done i've just been going yeah mario if you if you read the first mario. letter of every single one of my uh videos Luigi. it actually spells you should buy mario games Samus. actually it doesn't I've just no, realised because I have nerd nerd cube plays nerd cube. It would just be mm, for Father and Sunday. It's just nerd cube's Father and Sunday, just, mm, which is an N for Nintendo. <gasps> wow, 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 wow. It's my science music. What's the cool. what are we talking about today? What with the plan? Games. Do you want to do the theme tune? I haven't played the games. Game news. They're the best things in the world. Games. They're like movies, but not shit. Games. So, They're like books, but fuck books. Games. So, so um. Did you like that? That was good. That was. That was good. Yeah. No, that was great. <laughs> um. So after the end of last week's podcast, well, by week, whatever it is, after yeah. last podcast. Uh, when we ended on the question, what are you looking forward to? And the answer was, eh, there has been a lot of good news. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it sort of picked up a bit, to be perfectly honest. It did. It's, so it, it's what, if we say, it's, what we should be doing now is go, we haven't won the lottery for a while. Mm. <laughs> or, yeah. or ever, in fact. <laughs> God damn it. Um, yeah, it, 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 they, they, the, the gaming world went nuts! It did. It have these things. There are, I mean, this is like game release week when we're yeah. recording this. This is where the, they all came out. Today, in fact. They just all came out. The PlayStation Network went down for maintenance, is what they called it. What actually was was bracing. <laughs> <laughs> Murder Gate! <laughs> Fucking Far Cry 4, GTA 5. I'm getting a million games trying to barge their way through. But yes, GTA 5. Um, yep. First person. P Cross E5, P Cross E5 on the old 3DS. That's another one that came out. No one gives a shit, but I'm a fucking huge P Cross fan. I'm a huge P Cross fan, but I didn't realise there was a new one out. Yeah, it's the it's the fifth. I have all five. I've completed two fully. I'm I working like, my way through them. I liked Colour Cross the best. <gasps> Monster. Which I don't think was made by the same people, but it was not. Was a brilliant <laughs> you could go through the different colours and you had to solve it for each different basically you had to solve the puzzle yeah. for each separate color which was great yeah except for when they had colors which were a little bit too similar <laughs> <laughs> when it got very confusing um, green and greeny green uh. yeah th- there are cases like that well because it was all done like um all of the images look like 16-bit art yeah so they would have similar shades of green for shading and things which yeah. made really pretty things and it made it really look nice when you put it together. But when you sometimes had a collection of browns, <laughs> telling the difference between the three browns without context could become quite tricky. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so GTA V, first person mode. It did. And I want to point out the level of my friendship with Watt that that is installed just as we started recording i could play that now <laughs> and i'm not thank you That's, very much that is bromance it's just true saying. bromance just saying just cause bros before murdering hoes that's what i always say <laughs> well talking about murdering bros just cause. Murder- i didn't say murdering bros i said murdering hoes hoes uh, yes oh i thought you said bro- before murdering bros 
I said murdering hoes. GTA, it's what you do, isn't it? Really? I don't know. According to Fox News, that's it's a mur- it's a prostitute murder simulator. I thought that would have been right up their alley. <laughs> Um, I have, on Twitter today, I I accidentally mentioned that guns are bad, and the amount of <laughs> shit that flies at you. Well, because this came off right. So America just banned or banned a little while ago, or is going to ban. They've decided to ban magnet balls, magnet spheres. You know those little tiny magnets that are spheres that yep. you make into art. You've I know you've got them. I've got them. Yep. They're banned in America now because because you know because idiots died from them. Like, stupid babies ate some and died. I see. Can I guess the joke that you made? Was it by any chance? I see. People die from magnets and they ban them. People die from guns, but no, let's keep them. Yes, it was very much... (laughs) It was very much like three people have died from these things. Ooh, we should ban them so no one can buy them. But 30 people die a day through gun crime in America... Fuck it, everyone's not allowed these ridiculously automatic weapons. Semi-automatic? Yeah, okay. Can, yeah. Th- that's, they sort of have it like, how many people can it kill in a minute? Uh, if it's beyond a certain point, oh, we'll probably ban those ones. America's a fun country. But no, the, I, I, accidentally, I accidentally mentioned th- that, and, and holy shit, the crazies came out of the woodwork. I, my block button was busy. No, I don't care. I'll never care about anything you say. No, not you. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think I'm a bad person, and then I just think these people are for guns. And I'm okay with it. Guns God, are a, a tricky subject a for some stupid reason. Um, yeah. Because it like, should be like such a thing. simple subject. And, uh, like, it's the only weapon ever that has no practical use other than killing people. And things. Uh, how many it things? Can kill things. Uh, like well, animals, wild animals, wild yeah. animals. But like, if you compare it to say like uh, a knife or a chainsaw, like yes, those yeah. can be used in it a horror movie. It is a movie, device pretty much entirely for killing. You can use those for construction reasons. Um, you can use explosives, admittedly, just to blow stuff up. But mining yeah. definitely needs it, and there are practical reasons for wanting small controlled explosions. Yeah. Um, but guns literally only designed to do one thing, which is sort of... Kill slash maim. Kill yeah. slash maim and threaten. Yeah. All no, of those it. friendly things that you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, I, I, the people who always... They always argue the same things. Like, oh, you just don't understand. If if none of the legal people have guns, then all the illegal people have guns. I'm like, well, I come from the UK. But no one has guns. Some of the bad people do, and that's it. Well, the advantage is, one of the biggest advantages, is that you can then, if someone comes up to you with a gun, until they actually threaten you in America, they haven't committed a crime. Yeah. Whereas, in England, I can go, that guy's got a gun, arrest him. Yeah. Or girl. Is it, Girls can if, have if guns someone, too. If someone came up to me with a gun and went, give me all your money and I didn't have a gun, I would give them all my money. If I did have a gun, I would give them all my money. Why would I... Someone's got a gun. (laughs) And the gun, buddy, yeah. You want this as well? It's probably worth some money. I don't know. You just... just It's... Why would you fight? You know, it's sort of... They're not coming up... There's very few murderers who are going to target you in the street. I hope. And particularly if you look at the statistics, like, if you're armed, you're more likely to actually be killed by your own weapon than use it properly. And um, when they've done statistics of uh, people's reaction times, they've generally found that people who duck for cover uh, and ignore any weapons are much safer than those who decide to fumble around with weapons. Yeah. And in general, it's just a safer world if there are less of them Yep. Out there, but yeah, it's it's just it's uh, I the I thought but, of another use for explosives. That's mining. Yeah, uh, use. Yeah, I said that, but okay. Okay, I wasn't listening. Talking about <laughs> explosions and guns and over the top violence, just cause three. Hey! One of the weirdest um, 
game announcements ever in that <laughs> it seemed to announce itself by telling us everything it's not. Yeah. Like, it's trying to do that scientific thing where if you tell us everything it's not, you can work out what it is. It's like, it's a new game, and it's not got microtransactions, and it's it- not got multiplayer. And you know when you're there going, okay, I appreciate that this is technically news, but could yeah. you tell us what it is? <laughs> Well, the thing is, it, it, it's, it was like a firework. The, lo- the, the, the announcement of this game was like a firework that you light and then it sort of seems to go out and you're not sure. <laughs> yes. It's like, <laughs> shall I be excited? Uh, I don't... Uh, uh, and then it's like, no my good transactions! And you're like, hey! <laughs> I'm very it's glad it, about before, that. Before it, that it, weird... it all leaked out. Yeah. It, it, stuff leaked out and it got... There were some screenshots that were... And they, they matched up with the guy that was on the screenshots of the official release. And we were, I kind of went, look... Stop the hype for five seconds, let them talk. And they came out and went, it's got no microtransactions. And we went, hey. It did look like microtransactions because it had. Oh, that was of, a previous version that did test versions. them, but they didn't like it. Yeah, no, that oh. was that's not in the game. That was a previous version of the game that doesn't have them. So an old version, they went, let's test this idea. Because when you're building a game, you do test ideas that's like that. That's fair enough. And they decided it was a bad idea. That brilliant. is brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant. That is brilliant. They've also announced no multiplayer, single player focus. Yes. Yep. The, uh, so the, they, they only half mentioned that. Uh, they, they, there was a new article yesterday about the uh, multiplayer. There's yeah. There's no. There's no. Days. There's no multiplayer, but they're unofficially working on it. It's yeah. It's it's it, they're not yet. Got they're a, not. I don't think they're working on it yet. They're going to work on it later when well, the game is done. Then maybe. My understanding is that Square Enix is Sweet. working on a cloud system, and some of the Avalanche guys are also working on the cloud system, which many people are speculating is they're working on trying to make their own multiplayer version of Just Cause Three. Yes, um, possibly. But it's one of those ones where we don't really know. And what they have announced is that there will be no multiplayer game mode in Just Cause 3. When which is fine. Because... Which is fine because it's a single player yeah. game. It works so well as a single player game. Like the fact the other one had multiplayer was just a mod. It was just luck. Yeah. It was just luck that that was a game that people... And it's a great game. That's never going to get... That's not going to become a crappy game all of a sudden. Also, I love the fact that all they've announced so far is it's just more Just Cause. It's just more Just Cause in a new place. It looks prettier, and there's loads of new stuff in it. But what more do you need from a Just Cause game? Yeah, like, that's if a, it I mean, actually they, they had plot, I stuff. think I would see that as a negative rather than a positive. Yeah. <laughs> like, in fact, what they in do, fact like... fewer cutscenes would be an advantage, because I think the cutscenes were the worst part of that game. Uh, well, you can glitch the story in like 45 minutes of Fire Emblem. And I love them because they have that cheeky B-movie charm to them. Nothing... Look, that You cannot say a game takes itself seriously if the final mission is you leaping between in-flight nuclear <laughs> missiles. Okay? That's not a game that even gives a shit anymore. That is a oh, game that's gone... I liked the guess? missions. <laughs> I liked the missions. The missions I just didn't, didn't like the cutscenes. It was just one the- of those... They went all grainy and... In a weird way, and there was me feeling like they were trying to be artsy My in a name way is that. Bolo Santos, Santos, Bolo Santos. That's the. One. I've never skipped uh, cutscenes except for in Just Cause. <laughs> well, the problem is with Just Cause is the cutscenes were sort of that weird, silly. I think they should ham them up in the next one. But the missions were so good, like because normally it's just go there, kill things. In, in Just Cause Two, it's like shoot down the rocket that's taking off. Okay, <laughs> this is great. And then you fuck out. I remember bailing out, sticking myself onto the rocket, putting explosives on, jumping off, and then detonating it in midair. Um, they've announced okay. a few other things as well, haven't they? Doesn't he have a wingsuit from... He has a wingsuit now, yes. See, what they do is they sort of refine it. They're doing a bit of refining to a point with the Just Cause series. Like, if this was coming out every year, I'd be bored of it by now. Because it'd be oh, on the yeah. 27th game. And I'd be like, just do something new. But the fact is, because it's such a a slow release and they do change it up enough like Just Cause 1 you play that and you were like this is a great concept for a future game Just Cause 2 came out and you were like well nothing's going to beat this ever Just Cause 3 they've gone how do we beat Just Cause 2 yeah so uh, from the screenshots it looks like they've got multiple grappling hooks they've got stronger grappling hooks uh, they've got the wingsuit and stuff they've got new ways of getting around they've got some really interesting ideas I think the next step is I want a sci-fi Just Cause but 
that's bow, wow, wow, wow. that's that would be my list because I think um, I like the over the top explosions, and I think where do you go next is over the top explosions in space or something. Yeah, with crazier weapons because I don't yeah, think the they've Mars got. Base. I don't think they've got much more. In fact, it's funny you mention Mars bases. Uh-huh. Red Faction had some new news. Oh, did they? Yeah. I've been, re- I've been replaying Red Faction Guerrilla recently. Red Faction Guerrilla is going to have Steam Workshop support for mods. Oh, I that's good news because that I've literally been brilliant. trying to install mods into <laughs> Red Faction Guerrilla because I wanted to unlock... You know how the best bit of that game was the Wrecking Crew mode? Oh, it was, I've yeah. I've been trying to mod in... The vehicles, the, the the walkers into that, because there's an option for it, but the DLC that was those walkers never came out on PC. Ah. So there is a mod I do for it, have that two version, mods for it, but, but yeah. yeah. There's two mods for it, and it, they don't work anymore, because the game's been updated too many times. So if they add Steam Workshop support, that could be interesting. Yeah, I know that was announced of coming next year that they're going to start doing that, and that was me going... Okay. It's Bearing in mind, that was the, a game uh, where the real part of the game was rubbish, but the engine and the weapons were so great. Yeah. I yeah. I am there going, that's actually in the con- running for being one of the best games of next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be... I mean, because the, they're getting rid of the um, thingy support, Games for Windows Live support off of it. Oh, okay. They, they're killing Games for Windows Live because Games for Windows Live is a dead dog now. So that's what that's why that is getting the update. I actually recently did a video on Red Faction Girl. I can't remember if it's gone up by the time this goes up or not. If not, spoilers! It's just me trying to destroy a we, bridge. And it's do we noise. know when this is going up? I don't know when this is going up. I don't know when that's going up. All oh, my brain is now going. Is going. Just cause. No, not just cause. Three. It's Grand Theft Auto Five First Person. Grand Theft Auto Five First Person. <laughs> that's all that's in my head right now. But that yes, and, that I, and, I think that would oh. be really good. And especially, I mean, Just Cause is a wonderful example of. Things that have done really well uh, with mod support. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's so much potential for Red Faction to have uh, a really fantastic uh, breakable system in it because nothing else really has ever come close to it. Yeah, um, no, literally nothing. Yeah, not I can even think, the sequel. <laughs> I can. I, I oh yeah, the sequel was awful. Like sequel. the only <laughs> thing I liked in the sequel was the magnet gun. Yeah, but the rest of the game was awful. I liked the rebuilding gun, but that was actually in Gorilla as well in the multiplayer, and so I've modded it that was, into my single yeah. player. So my single player has that now. Shall I agree, play? that was fun, but yeah, they struggled from that game because they said, "Let's do it all small and put it in caves where there's nothing to destroy." Yeah, um, and I always found it ironic in. Uh, gorilla that you're supposed to be using modified mining equipment and yet the only thing it couldn't damage was the ra- the, 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 <laughs> the ground, the, the ground. Um, yep uh, why, do, why do you need a singularity bomb in mining <laughs> why not <laughs> that, that, that's a damn good answer <laughs> if you were a miner and someone gave you a singularity bomb would you complain uh, no you see never give singularity bombs to miners but I'm Tish Get it? Because minor, as in uh, minor. I see but what not you're saying. Minor there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got there. Not minor. I'm sorry, I was minor. a bit slow. Minor. Yes, you are. Talking like of a minor, not okay. minors, minors, not okay. mi- minors, minors, not the okay. chord, the man with. The not the ma- the not not the majors. <laughs> yes, I not it. modern Stop major saying the word minor. I can't cope with it. Um, right. Talking about destruction engines. Ooh, you on so many segues. I think you were okay. Go, bam! Great joke. Get, that was that made me happy. Just okay. saying that. I'm fine. Oh, Go I got on. what you. I, I got it now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you made a segue joke. Yes. Um. Yes. No. There's um. Uh, Xbox are working on a roller coaster game that I've just realised I forgot to take down the title of. Scream right, something like that, and it's got it's full. Exactly destru- it's got a full destruction engine in it. It does, so that you can have right, make your roller coaster, and then make it go extremely horribly wrong. It's it's sort of yeah. They've like they've said they're trying sure to be more. Yet. They've said they're trying to be burnout meets roller coaster tycoon. 
which admittedly oh, did you hear? does did sound you hear? good. No, the more important thing, Just Cause 3 have okay. got the guys who made Burnout's racing engine to do the driving in this game, in Just Cause 3. Oh, like that Like Burnout, is I'm talking about 3 takedown sort of era, I believe. The oh, PS2 that era. is fantastic. <laughs> I was like, I'm there going... Ah, okay. There's me. I'm. I'm now there. Going. There might actually be a chance. I use a car in this. <laughs> <laughs> I hear there were cars in the last game. I, I, I sure. heard there was. I remember yes. having discussions with you where you're there going. You know, there's a really cool car there, and we're like, I'm like, I have a grappling hook, <laughs> and uh, like the cars are generally whatever's lying around. Yeah. It's it was it really was yeah I mean all right so so Scream Ride, Scream Ride yeah, I not sold on it yet because it's not a businessy game it's a like puzzle ish game like you've yeah. got build this get this over here and then you get to knacker it up so there's like it has three gameplay modes engineer riding mode and then the demolition guy so you build them up you can then ride them and then you fuck them up cool but there's like there's I don't know. Not how it's it's all about points and scoring, and it's not about building and money. So, the bit that I really like about Roller Coaster Tycoon seems to be fading away slightly. Oh, okay. So, as much as they call it a spiritual successor, Roller Coaster Tycoon, it's more like the oh, what was that? It was a shit roller coaster game. We had to like just finish roller coasters off. It's more like that one. It's it's made by the same people who made Roller Coaster Tycoon Three, who oh. are a weird weird company. They they did so that so they uh, they, they made Roller Coaster Tycoon three. They also made Roller Coaster Tycoon for the Xbox back in two thousand and three, I believe. And yeah. the two expansion packs, Roller Coaster Tycoon two, Wacky World, and Time Twister. Is that the American titles? Yeah, I think so. They made those uh, for Windows platform. So they have been with the Roller Coaster Tycoon series for a while. Well, they they added expansion packs and stuff to it. They never built one from scratch. Oh, they, they built Thrillville, which I didn't like. There we go. So, uh, th- here's a fun thing for you. I've got Thrillville on the PSP, and I've never played it because it's in French. Oh. I have no idea why. There's no way to change the language. It's just French. Here's something I found out recently. Um, uh-huh. The, I think Sony are releasing... Not Sony. Square Enix are releasing uh, the Final Fantasy... Type Zero, which is a sort of Hogwarts base based type thing. Your your mages in a school uh-huh. doing magic stuff, which originally came out ages ago uh, for the PSP, mm-hmm. and that I believe they're now modding it for the PlayStation Four, which seems uh-huh. like a weird jump to me. Mm. And then they're doing the classic, trying to sell it by giving away the demo for fifteen. Um, oh, I. Which originally, all, all both of those games were originally called Final Fantasy XIII, and it shows just how bad XIII was that both of them have now dropped the Final Fantasy XIII title <laughs> because it was not selling games much better than it was selling them. Uh, yeah. So that jumped around to. Um... But yeah, that seemed a bit interesting to me. Hmm. But mostly I, just I, on a... Why would you go from PSP to PS4? Like, I Terraway's understand... Terraway's doing that. Terraway's getting a, a going from the Vita to oh, the PS4. Oh, that's true. And it's losing a lot of its features. It's like it's almost a different game, apparently. Because like, there's a lot of stuff that just wouldn't work. I love Terraway. I, I know. I, do. I don't think... I, Terraway works I don't think well anyone because... who played Terraway didn't love it. That's. I think the, the problem is, though, it's like one of the only two games on the PS Vita... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of worth playing. Ah, oh, the PS Vita, so much potential. <laughs> oh well, I'm playing Binding of Isaac on it a bit. It's really fucking laggy, but I'm trying. I'm like, I want to love you. Why won't you let me love you, Vita? Yeah, Play some games. Play some games. Yeah. yeah uh, what? Else? What else? I was thinking I was about to say. I can't remember what it was. Um, no, it's gone. This is embarrassing. We're on a podcast and we're talking about oh. what we can't remember. Oh, oh no! Uh, the people who made Warcraft Tycoon, I re- they, they're the oh, ones yeah. doing Elite at the moment. The new Elite game, aren't they? Elite Dangerous. My brain I, cannot I... work out what we're talking about. The people who make the oh, Scream the, Ride, who the, made Warcraft the, Tycoon Three, the spaceship battle game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I... 
I, I still believe... have no opinion on that as well, so... <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't they, do they, space I, games very well. Didn't they recently just say they're not doing a single player at all now? You have to be online at all times, so fuck it, to be perfectly honest. I don't know. I, I'm going to look this up. I'm actually going to look this up. I'll be honest, I think I played this at Duro Gamer. Uh, but yeah, I queued up could... for the um, th- the virtual reality yeah, version. Yeah. And accidentally ended up hitting the person next to me. <laughs> um It was really nice, because you can see a full cockpit, and particularly because they'd set mm. it up so that you've got... Um, your throttle backwards and forwards lever and your joystick and so your hands are naturally sitting in the right positions so so and they move when you move the item so it looks like your your hands are connected even though there's no sensors on your hands or anything that's a nice little feature and someone was going there's something to your left now what he meant was to my left as in just to the left of my vision sort of if uh, 12 o'clock is right in front of me at sort of 10 or 11 so that it would be on the screen if it was just a screen but because they'd put t- statistics and things that meant nothing at sort of 90 degrees sort of you know at the sort of um, I'm now trying to remember how a clock works 9 o'clock <laughs> I'm good at other things I'll throw in a community reference yep. you're fine Eight, uh, uh, eight o'clock or nine o'clock. There's really interesting things. I was looking over there for the uh, statistics of the the ship I'd locked on to, and I'm going, "Is it that?" And sort of pointed right to my side, and ended up bashing <laughs> the person next to me because I'd forgotten <laughs> that I'm not actually in a cockpit, and we were s- squashed very tightly in the way that you are at demo booths. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the VR was quite good, though. Admittedly. Uh, I gave up halfway through the tutorial with sort of... Oh. He's, he's there going, do you want me to play? And you just experience it. It's like, no, I I think I appreciated this is a good game for someone who can play a space simulator. Yeah. But that's a, not me. It's a one-to-one space simulator. Isn't it? They, they're saying that they've made a one-to-one representation of the Milky Way. Ah. Oh. You have to play it in real time, driving about the speed of a New York taxi. It's going to be fun. This is going to take a long time. Oh my god, I've just realised something. They're, they're called Frontier Developments. They must have made uh, Elite 2, which was actually called Frontier Elite 2. Is that why they're called Frontier? I am genuinely going to Google them now. Excuse me. Googling break. Googling is the Googling thing. i got to Google stuff and Google. Because we don't know okay. everything off the top of our heads. <laughs> I try. Games developed. Frontier, Elite 2. Yeah, good. That probably, they probably is why they're called Frontier Developments. It would make sense. There you go. It normally uh, slightly they... bugs me when they name a studio after something they made. Um, <laughs> especially for things like Sonic Team at Sega when they, released, when they made things that wasn't Sonic. And then other people made Sonic and you're like, why are you called Sonic <laughs> Team? It's like um, Psychonauts Productions, the one that Tim Schafer runs. That's what they're called, right? Uh, ah, that'll be fine. <laughs> that'll, uh, that'll do. This is great. I'm, I'm reading through the list of games that Frontier Developments have made. They made Wallace and Gromit Project Zoo, which I never heard of. They made Dog's Life. I like that game. I like Dog's Life. That is a weird but fun game. They made Wallace and Gromit The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, which was great. Really good. And then okay. since then, they've not made a single good thing. <laughs> they made Thrillville that I don't quite like. The sequel to Thrill, which I don't quite like. Lost Winds, what well, I've no idea what that is. Connectimals. This is now my favourite title of any game ever. Connectimals, colon, now with bears! <laughs> 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 that is amazing. <laughs> um, they made a game called Co- Coaster Crazy for iOS. Oh, they made the really shit Zoo Tycoon on Xbox. Oh man, that's actually just n- knowing that has killed any hype I may have had for Scream Ride whatsoever. Okay then, because that was awful. That was actually trying to be Zoo Tycoon as well. Maybe if they don't try and be it, it's not. Go- oh, no, it's not going to be a Roller Coaster Tycoon replacement. So it's not. No, I don't think they're even trying to be. It. I think they're trying to make something that does the the bit where you go wrong on purpose with just Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I think they're focusing yeah. on that aspect. You know the. Let's have a launch machine which launches it, and but you haven't built enough things so it explodes. And I think they're trying yep. to focus on that style rather than any of the management. 
Nah, it could be fine. I, Maybe not. I, we'll see. We'll just, just, we'll just have to play it and, you know, make a I've video on it. I've just remembered that there's a Roller Coaster Tycoon 4 coming out. I'm there going, oh, one day we'll get another Roller Coaster. No, there is, that's genuinely in development. I'm aware of this. How did I not remember that? Is, isn't is this the version? I can't remember. Wasn't there a Roller Coaster Tycoon 4 that was all microtransactions and for the mobile? No, that was ro- that was Roller Coaster Tycoon 4 mobile. There's a new one ah. called Roller Coaster Tycoon World. Oh. Which is coming out. That's technically the fourth roller coaster I could. It's it seems to have a focus on co op stuff. So, Ugh. I any anything that's coming back, I have massive skepticism for, and I'm I feel I'm right to have it in these days. Skepticism well, is a good thing. I I, I agree because see, see I, I just that... said skepticism is a good thing. This Doctor Who is gone. I am a dark person now. That's that's what's happened. I without Matt Smith and any of the Doctors that are nice. I've yeah. lost my happiness. Doctor Who was amazing. It used to be like the bit in every episode of Transformers where Optimus Prime would say that humans were awesome. That's what it was. Now yeah. it's not. Humans are shit. Everything's shit. <laughs> I watched the finale just for this podcast. Yeah, Wish I, I kind of did too. <laughs> there was did... actually to be. Are we moving on to TV? Because I did the TV well, jingle. Do you have any I, more game news? I had one more thing I wanted to talk about on games, but we can come back to it if you want. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember the jingle. <laughs> okay, then. Um, I want to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, okay. TV time! It's TV okay, time! Then. I don't know what the game is in. It's TV time! That sounds RPG-ish. It is. It, it's the, the only reason I want a Wii U. Um, oh, yes. It's a giant mech uh, game. I can talk about it some other time when there's less news. And talk about why it's better than most RPGs, JRPGs. You can, you can, you can talk about it at length when the podcast has stopped going. Okay, <laughs> okay, TV time. <laughs> so I just can't get excited about RPGs. Oh my god, TV! So hang on, I need a TV jingle. If you like games, but uh, TV, I fucked that jingle up. <laughs> I think your it's TV time. It's TV time was better. Yeah, that was that was the re- see. That's why I fucked you up. We can't have two jingles for the same thing. Yeah, it it would just yeah. be craziness. Yeah. Um. So Doctor Who. Yes. More like. Doctor and so Who concludes my thoughts right. on Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> there were some bits I liked. I li- I think Missy was fun. I I, I think that was a, that was a great that was a, a great version of character who shall not be named for the sake of spoilers. But it was really fucking obvious and quite boring. I thought that was a much more interesting. Yeah, thing to I didn't there. think there was very. I liked the windows. It was the master. Fuck your spoilers. <laughs> no, I was going to say I. I liked the windows and the things looking like uh, eyes, which I didn't yes. overly pick up on straight away. That would have been amazing if every single trailer and the first promotional photos for this series didn't contain the fucking Cybermen. I agree. That would have been um, much nicer. And it also would have been nice to... Um... But yeah, and I liked... Well, I didn't like the fact that they had the technology ignoring water because that kind of was an issue for me. But <laughs> once I overlook that, as I kind of have to do with all Doctor Who, so like, yeah. that's not a pick at new Doctor Who, that's just a pick at a D- Doctor Who in general. You just have to sit down sometimes and go, I'm just not going to let reality phase me. Um, and so... Because once you sit down with that, uh, I I liked the water draining and seeing the Cybermen. Though also part of me was going, why is the skeleton the only bit that got saved? Yeah. Like, surely there are organs and things. Cybermen can't just need skeletons. Well, apparently, they, like, they, they were like, the, the things they were saying was one drop of rain connects with one cell of organic tissue. And that can create a whole Cyberman from magic... Yeah, which was quite a leap to jump over. There's me going. Also, the whole the whole plot. So I'm going to fully spoil this now. The whole I'm plot dissolves because they're there going. We're we're gonna if it touches a living cell, it will take over and it can become a whole Simon. There's me going. Why not do it to alive people? Well, Just, how does this know when they're dead or not? I the, don't get why this is the a thing. The comment that really bugged me was when she said, "You know, the key strategic uh, problem with the human race: the dead outnumber the living." You know, when you're there going. You have not looked at the world population <laughs> figures. <laughs> Turns out that's only true if you're counting kids. 
Cyber Kids is what the army should have been. Because all the, same the thing. number, yeah, it but, was. but if you look at the world population, the number of forty-year-olds, people over the age of forty, mm-hmm. um, there are more people alive over the age of forty than died over the age of forty <laughs> in the history of the human race. Yeah. Okay. Because of the way that the the, the world the growth population is insane. Like, yeah. I think. By the around the Victorians, it was only a few billion, and then we're sort of seven billion or eight billion. I don't know. It's go- it's getting that crazy that a lot of yeah, big billions. It's it. We're just growing so quickly that you're there going, nah. Bringing back all of the dead actually isn't as much of a number of advantage as you'd have thought it was. Yeah, and that one really bugged me for some reason. Um, there, there was. What really bugged me was that it was the the first part was actually pretty damn good at getting stuff set up. I liked the first episode. I mean, I've liked the plots of this whole series pretty much, apart from the awful forest one. I also didn't. Well, I didn't understand a lot of it. Like, I didn't really understand why you had why they were saving the brains of people. There was a lot of of, and and I didn't really understand why this meant that Missy had tried to organize. Hey, Missy, you're so fine. You're so um, fine. You blow my, my name, Missy. It's my favourite bit. Okay. I like Missy. I, I thought she did a really good job. That was an amazingly great acted character. She was very she John Sims. Against. She was very John Sims. And I prefer the master to be more cold and reserved. Oh, uh, no. I prefer psychopathic bananas any time. And she was much more the psychopathic bananas but she did do an authentic version of being john sims master yeah as opposed Which to is good because that's the master the, the, the master that knows. i like yes um because she didn't there have was, a goatee there, there were that's two, why there she were, couldn't be a serious master <laughs> it, we, we all know scenes. the master's seriousness is hidden this in his goatee on his beard okay <laughs> because john sims wasn't serious and he didn't have De- a goatee uh, Derek Jacoby didn't have a goatee and he was serious. I liked Derek Jacoby as the master. I wanted... I, <laughs> uh, I fell in love with him as the master. As I was the so master unhappy like when he seconds. I was so unhappy when he, he regenerated. That was a great reveal. That was such a good episode. That, that, that was a real slow reveal. That, that, Considering that really how the bad a two-parter that, that was, it was a really great lead oh, into that's, it. That's one of my... Well, because that was a three-part. I remember that was Utopia, which was the episode before. Yeah, it. I liked Utopia, but I disliked. I think the, Utopia the is the best back. cliffhanger Doctor Who has ever had. I think I, I, I'd go there. It, to be perfectly honest, if the next generation, je, je, hey, what? If the next generation <laughs> episode, I know, right? The <laughs> the best of both worlds didn't exist, then uh, it would probably be my favorite cliffhanger of all time. But that exists, sadly, and yeah, Riker saying fire is still the best thing. But yeah. um. Another yeah, character like development based on I like, that two-parter. I like that two-parter. I like that two-parter. I think that was a fun two-parter with the master, especially the first part. The second part is always a bit where it falls down with most of the things, most of the two-parters. Is this like this is like the first two-part we've had in years? Um, is it? Since I don't since because last year was all there was no two-parters we whatsoever. We didn't really, yeah. And the rest of the series had no two parts. So this is like our first two parts in like. Also, I was slightly series. shocked when the I saw the Children in Need special. Uh, oh, it's Children in Need. This year, it was on Friday. Oh, fucking uh, Canada! Again, things I only watched for this <laughs> podcast, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I could be up to date on the Doctor Who news. Um, <laughs> but there's bits of Clara in it, and I'd assumed that the end of that series had written off Clara, and I won't. Well, there goes my reasons for being interested in the next. Huh? I assume one. that was the end of Clara as well. Because well, okay. clearly, I didn't like the fact they basically said anyone who's hugging cuddles. They're basically just so that people can hide their emotions. I was like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> Hugs are nice. Lines. There were also some shit lines. I, I wasn't a fan of love isn't an emotion; it's a promise. And this me going, well, "I love bacon, so fuck you." That is an <laughs> emotional state. That is not a promise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, the, the, I like the. Do you think? Oh, what was the line? I'll fuck it up and I, I'll screw it. The betrayal line. Do you think I care for you so little that betraying me wouldn't make a difference or would make a difference or whatever it was? That was a lovely line. Yeah. That was that was that was Moffat showing off. I like it when Moffat shows off. 
I just wish he had a doctor to actually read the lines. <laughs> Well, see, right, the the problem is that I had with the finale is that there were two massive scenes that I was like, holy shit, this is actually going to be, this is going to pull it back. There were two scenes that just weren't in it. So the first one was right at the end. The Doctor's been handed the keys to an army, and the Master's gone, ha ha ha, now you have an army. Which was apparently the extent of the Master's plan. Yeah. Uh, that's the point where the Master goes, oh, and look who I called, and thousands and thousands of Dalek spaceships turn up. But oh, that, that didn't happen. Been a bit interesting. That's what I thought was going to happen. The master would go, "Oh, look, I've called up a massive army." Oh, now I've because like the doctor's a good man. As much as the series has gone, oh, is he a good man? Kind of a dick. He's still doing good. Dice apart. He's not having adventures. That's why I have a problem with him. But if I agree, so you, you Atlantis go, has been so much army. more fun in one episode than all of the last because <laughs> uh, Atlantis started again. Um, I didn't know it was a start before. You mean Stargate Atlantis? No, Atlantis oh. is a BBC program oh. based in a campy version of. Basically, it's Greek mythology, and it shouldn't be called Atlantis at all because okay. it's really Jason and the Argonauts, but with a time traveler. Oh, right. um, right. But it was kind of like, let's have a, him travel back in time. Why is he traveled back in to, or back through into this parallel world? But like. He knows virtually nothing that's useful or interesting, nor is he trying to get back to his home world. You know when you're there going, why the hell did you do that? Like, the (laughs) only thing he's known is that when he met a girl called Medusa, that at some point she'd turn into a Gorgon. And that's the (laughs) only thing he actually knew. Um, But it's very fun and silly and campy in the way that you want... uh, It's sort of what Doctor Who should be and last year you were like oh that's fun but i've got doctor who and this year it was like i don't have doctor who let's have this um (laughs) where you go off and have adventures and just be silly and he hangs out with pythagoras and hercules um so one person going on about triangles and another person just being a drunk person who boasts all of the time but actually is useless um see now i have to watch that see like it's fun they're also doing uh, Some Girls Has Come Back, which is a nice sitcom based on schoolgirls. No, uh, it's nothing like that. It's just uh, a fun sitcom which happens <laughs> to have a female cast. It, I suppose it's the in betweeners. They do female girls. casts these days? Man, TV Occasionally. <laughs> and still it fails the Bechdel test or whatever it is. Um, possibly some episodes do. <laughs> I don't know. No, so, 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 so Doctor, so it, it, I, I thought another army would turn up and give the Doctor a reason to fight, and then you can have Danny yeah. Pink save the day or whatever with the with the that sort of thing. I like the fact that Danny Pink deleted his emotions and then gave an emotional speech. I think, yeah, I thought that was quite entertaining. That seemed a um, bit weird. But no, so so there's that. There's that was just. I I, I I thought there'd be a sting to the tail, you know. I thought there'd be something coming up, and then there wasn't. And then I was like, okay, well, they're definitely going to do this next bit because this next bit's been set up for the whole series, and they ignored it. I wanted the Doctor to go back into St. Paul's, see the Nether Sphere, and go, "What the fuck do I do with this?" Like that's like the most. Imp- that's that's the afterlife, and the Doctor has the power to what happens to it. If you want to see if this yep. is a good man. What does he do with that? Because it's dying. They they established in the episode that it was just going to die and turn off. But the Doctor's like, ah, something will happen to that. He didn't bother to look or check. Yeah, there's that's been such a theme for all of the episodes of the Doctor not caring about anything. It's, it's more like he just hasn't noticed things. Is what it seems to have been. I know. It's like he doesn't know anything. He doesn't care. He's not the Doctor. Yeah. And that's it's, just it's been also, such a issue with that, it. Yeah, that's. I thought. I thought there would be those two really interesting scenes that would make some really interesting things happen, and neither of them actually happened. So yeah, I preferred your plot, which was the um, the 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 idea that it was made up of people that the Doctor had failed to save. Yeah, and I think that I had. I had a that that tied in with my Missy being. Uh, Clara from one of the Splinter Claras who the Doctor just screwed over almost Agrajag style by accident a lot possibly 
Or a hell, a parallel doctor that she eventually found and killed, and she's going through and killing all the doctors. And that would tie everything up very nicely, and wouldn't need the Cybermen. So you've got all the people who found Lurty, so she can bring him to his knees of, you're not a good man, and then he can save the day. Yeah, would have been nice. Would have been nice. Admittedly, it's tongue. also really weird, because um, making the Doctor the President, wouldn't oh, I, it be I, annoying... I wouldn't it be annoying if, you know, because I probably would have voted. It, it really yeah. feels so true. Like, you know, it feels like if Matt Smith had run for president, I'd have voted for him. And then he turns into Peter Capaldi. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's <laughs> not the man I voted for. <laughs> it, it just felt so true to politics that, you know, <laughs> finally get the one I want. And then he goes and uh. regenerates on me. And turns yeah. into a different person. <laughs> yeah, but it was I, that, I, there was a lot of stuff in that. Where were they flying on that plane? The side men have flown up in the sky and made clouds. What do we do? Get in the plane. Why? I, I we have were, internet. We can talk anywhere in the world. I don't know where it would be more necessary. I think they were just doing the uh, Agents of Shield cover. <laughs> <laughs> Let's live on a plane. I mean, uh, a yellow submarine would have been more fun. Yes, or a blue box. A blue box would have worked, yeah. There's a lot of strange things in that episode. I don't know. It sort of missed the mark as a finale. Because it it has that problem that Doctor Who tends to have, which is, and this is pretty much every finale apart from the Big Bang, of I come up with an idea and I'm like, that's going to be amazing. And then something boring happens with a bad guy we already know about. And I'm like, oh. But for me, on top of that, there was just the... I kind of felt like I needed something clever to justify going yeah. through all the rubbish. And there yeah. was nothing clever there. There wasn't anything that said, oh, he's angry because... Or, oh, he chose to regenerate into a face that he's seen before because, oh, he has had a brain that doesn't seem to remember or be on top of things ever because, oh, <laughs> this is... like. There were so many things Missy I needed chose him. Missy Clara because yeah, that was one that that was a huge fucking red herring. It was like of, a... oh, oh no, it wasn't. It was established. It was you were really bossy. Yeah, and that was the the only person that would make the doctor actually come here. Oh, and that whole fucking key scene was ridiculous. Yeah, that was I, stupid too. That never sold it to me because of like so many reasons I've seen. Like the TARDIS can materialize keys in his fucking hand. Just like if the, if he went, he the just TARDIS needs to click his went, fingers to open. Yeah, it. I know. But even if that was, I thought it works if it's unlocked. It's like if he went up to TARDIS, went all right, love, it's me. She opened the doors. Yeah, that's what the TARDIS would do. I have to admit, on the the matter of the TARDIS key, it has got a lot more boring. Yeah, I I prefer the interesting TARDIS keys. Yeah. I know they've gone through variations, and I liked the weird ones, which look like weird, interesting pendants rather than the current Ordinary ones, which Yale just lock, look like a Yale fits, lock. To quote the uh, blink, I'm on fire with quotes today. But yeah, I'm also so on fire. Doctor Who happened. It did, and that's all we have to say about it. Just that it happened, and that's it. <sighs> I haven't seen any movies. I'm not. I, I, I'm. Part of me is worried now because I don't know what I'm going to be doing at Christmas. I know. Like, like the Christ- big thing Christmas about Christmas is looking forward to Doctor yeah. Who specials, and I just don't have it in me. Like, yeah. I'm just there going. Ah, oh, I don't. I don't have it in me to be excited for it. I mean, to be perfectly honest, in all but one year, they've been disappointing. No, that's not oh. true. Oh, no, there's two. I can think of two that were not disappointing. Hang on. I'm trying and to think it. of how many Matt Smith ones there were. Because I can three. think of three, and two of them were amazing. And it's those two that I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> the rest have just been blanket boo. I well, think some of the, of the others had some nice special guests and things. Kylie. Kylie was nice to have, and then it was Kyle, quite nice Kyle to Kylie have. Kylie were wasted in that episode. I... She was. But at least it was a nice, slightly big episode. And we've had a few... It was pleasurable! It was just everyone dies the end. Yeah, but it looked pretty. Merry Christmas, you're all dead. Everybody dies. Yep. Dead, 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 dead. And introduced Bernard Crivin, who is the best Doctor companion ever. 
I w- yeah, but he was also in the worst episodes of Doctor Who. Yeah, he was since this series. <laughs> he he was he he was there for the shit. He get he got me through Tenants Regeneration. When are they going? The Master Race, for the love of God! <laughs> what the Master should just turn up one day, shoot the Doctor in the face, and be like, oh, "That was fucking easy." The Master's become the Joker. Have you noticed this? Uh, I it, hadn't the until you is, said is the that Joker. He is, yeah. He's or she, or whatever. Now is is in fact just the Joker to the Doctor's Batman. Yeah, in that they are very weird arch nemeses rather than villains in that yeah. they actually have no interest in winning they only have interest in beating the hero and playing with the hero yeah in the most elaborate scheme possible yeah this one being here's a giant army why don't you use that giant army to attack things ah oh, you can do it and then you're a bad person yeah okay which is very similar to um sort of the situation that they tried to do with the Joker at the end of Arkham Origins I've not played that so yeah well, I thought you might not have I, I did it's buy a good it like a few days ago it's got it was a good like ending. really cheap spoilers I, I brought it it was, it was really cheap a few days ago it was like four quid or something so I got a copy of it okay my comments would be A it's a pretty glitchy game well it was when I played it and yeah, not Assassin's Creed not Assassin's Creed glitchy but slightly glitchy uh, yeah. I expect you to be moaning about problems, and it got really laggy the longer you played it. You had to keep re- turning it off and turning it back <laughs> on again. Um, so there were some really bad parts of it, but um, the plot and the boss fights were all very good. Um, but all of the middle bits were very the samey. Oh, I liked I should, the I detective should... mode. They updated the detective mode to be spoilers, actually spoilers feel now. like I a detective mode. You made me want to play it. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> you've Damn got GTA you. 5 to play. I know, I've got GTA 5 <laughs> and Far Cry 4 and so many other things to play. In fact, that's probably it. I'm not going to do Assassin's Creed. I'm skipping it. It doesn't have boats. I'm actually going to get a copy of Rogue, though. I want to play Rogue. I have. I, I still like haven't it. played Assassin's Creed 4. I should do that. <sighs> it's great. It's, it's, it's great now late it's enough so that it's probably working properly. Yeah, oh no, it was it was always quite if I'm right, it was a good PC port but it was a little laggy like it always is when it came out, but a patch later it worked fine. It's okay. a so, it's a good solid like uh console port as well, so if you want to pick it up on consoles, feel free. I will pick that up then. Although it'll probably be cheaper on Steam. It was on sale a little while ago, wasn't it? It may have been. I don't know. I'll be a pirate. Wow. Pirate. pirate? You'll be what? a pirate pirate. You'll be a pirate when you talk right, you've got to be careful oh, is when it talking not about PC games. Oh, no, you, well, sorry. You are a You've got to be careful oh, on PC games that you're not going to be a pirate. I will point that out. <laughs> sorry, I was not talking about downloading the game illegally. I was talking about being getting scurvy and dying of sickness. <laughs> <Okay, it's good. laughs> no, Which I yes. assume is what you do in that game. Yes, and at university, so I've heard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> I mean, I didn't achieve... Well, I got very close to getting scurvy, but... Um, I got scurvy. I got scurvy. But, um, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. Right, there's TV done. Bam! What's Bam. next section? Movies. Some movies. I've seen I've two movies. Watching. What did you watch? I watched um, The Book of Life, which is a sort of... Mexican Halloween, which I uh-huh. apologise, I know that's offensive to fans of the sex move. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, what? no, it's... Isn't that what they... Uh, it's a line from Community where they talk I about Mexican remember. Halloween. How can I outquote you on Community? Because it's a Halloween episode and I don't really give them my thoughts. They just okay. happen in the background of me not... It's the episode where Pierce goes mad and... Abid oh, is Batman that first. one of nine. <laughs> uh, I think I know the one you're on about. Yeah, he's that's drugs with the, and he's is the Batman. Beastmaster. It's the first time Abed is Batman. Yeah, yeah and yeah, he yeah. rescues him from the collection of chairs that collapse on top of him. I got there eventually. I'm just reeling from my OK Go reference from earlier. It's but, um, yes, so it's an OK movie, and it really struggles from the fact that 2015... Uh, sorry, 2014... Uh, has been the such year we are in. The year we are in. Though admittedly, you just did a highlights reel for 2015. Oh no, I only I, I I misnumbered that. Like when I was typing <laughs> in the title, I put I, I went to hit a four and hit a five and went yeah right. 
<laughs> um, yeah, for 2014, um, it's been such a great year for films that it means that this film that should have been a pretty good film is just not going to make any of the lists this year because yeah. it's nowhere near as good as the Lego movie or How to uh, 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 How to Train Your Dragon 2 or... Godzilla. Um, or, and many of the action movies are so great this year, like Godzilla. Uh, the yeah. new X-Men film was a really good action movie. Haven't Captain America it. 2. Um, Haven't seen it. There have just been so many great movies this year that I'm just there going... Movies take time to watch. It's it's a little bit the... of a pain to some extent that you, you, the, the movie's like a... Yeah, like... Last year or the year before, that probably would have made my top five. Mm. But this year is probably struggling to make my top ten. Like, so, um... Good year for movies. Good year for movies, but, uh, yeah. I mean, as a film goes, it's fine. It wasn't anything special. Um, uh, yeah, it, it did the job quite nicely. And then I also Speaking saw the of, hang on, imitation hang on, hang on. games. Okay. Did you see Community? Um, Shirley's not coming back for the next series. I did not. Shelly's not coming back for next year. But she's so nice. She's so nice. Oh, well, she's, that's not nice. Do you know why she's not coming back? Do you know why she's not coming back? No. If I, if I, if I read this right, uh, her father's really ill, so she's going to spend lots of time looking after him instead. She's not coming in because she is Shirley in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I'm she's gonna going back her, to her ex-husband. Mm-hmm. So there's no Shirley. Maybe Troy. He was only gone for that one series. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe not. Maybe. A star guest at the end of LeVar Burton. Oh, we missed the TV thing. We missed the TV thing? I missed mentioning about talking about TV. Th- We're going back to the TV thing. I do apologize. Okay, did you watch the Simpsons Futurama crossover? I did, yes. Oh, I like that. That was fun. Uh, that was- yeah, did the job. I, mean, I, I, I liked the-, the introduction line, I think, was the best bit, which was... A show that's run out of episodes. With a <laughs> meets the show cr- that's meets run, out the ideas. run out of ideas. That was quite. Fun. It was. It was a quite entertaining episode. It was very Futurama, and I miss Futurama, so that was good. The Family Guy Simpsons crossover was okay. I did was not know great. that had happened. Uh, that was on Family Guy. They had a Simpsons episode. I'm happy to have not known that happened. I don't like Family Guy. It's it's a great watch because they. It must be written by... The, it's got all the like, Simpsons characters and everything. They go to Springfield and all of the stuff. But it's... um, It, 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 it just seemed to take the... It, ruin, it, like, it basically said all the things that I hate about Family Guy. I was like, yep, Family Guy's shit. It ended. And that was really <laughs> it. <laughs> like, well, they, have Bart, they have Bart do a prank. And, and like a prank call, and it's it's some funny name, and I giggled at it and stuff. Yeah, and he's because he's, he's Bart and Stewie are hanging out together, and the Stewie's like, "Oh, give me a go, give me a go!" And then he 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 calls uh, up Mo and he goes, "Hello, I ripped your sister," and hangs up. And there's me going, "Yeah, that's why I don't like your humor." <laughs> what you've done there is a perfect example yep. of why you're shit. It's it's I I this is awful, and this never happened, and this isn't canon. Yeah, and also they waste like ten minutes on another fucking stupid over long fight scene. Like oh. this is Homer versus thingy, and they just have I a hate crossovers up. that become uh, always just two people at odds having a fight. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Ah, <laughs> uh, but the uh, drama one with the the plot that was the most obvious plot in the world. I still was entertaining. I wish it was a longer one because the Family Guy one was a forty minute episode. The future only gets twenty. I suppose that's because it was one Simpsons episode and one Futurama episode, a one Family Guy episode. But Futurama didn't have any episodes to give, so it just had to be a Simpsons <laughs> episode. I have nothing to give but my soul. <laughs> nothing to give but the jokes. The jokes. We need more Futurama. I miss it. Anyway, I kind of wished. I kind of wished that there had been the joke where they did the "Hey, look." Homer and Bender look similar and go Krusty would never do this <laughs> I'd love that as a as a throwaway line yep because um, Krusty didn't die did he they all set up that Krusty was going to die at the start of the series someone was going to die at the start of the Simpsons series did you hear about this I did not hear about this 
it was this big thing for ages. It was milked so hard that the start of the series, someone is going to die forever in The Simpsons. And it's someone who got an award for playing this character. And people were like, it's going to be Homer. It's going to be this. It's going to be... Ah. Turn out to be Krusty's dad. Yep. <laughs> They're going, okay, it's fine. You so, <laughs> back to movies? Yeah, why not? So is, I liked me. I saw the Imitation Games, which mm-hmm. was everything I wanted it to be. Um, is it is it a film about people trying to recreate the Hunger Games? Like picture no. for picture? Oh. No, it is a film about Alan Turing. Oh, I like him. Um, well, he's the father of modern, well, the modern world, really. Yeah, um, that's why I like him. Uh, he he. For those of you who don't know, he created uh, the Turing machine. Um, which is basically a computer that runs a program. Yeah. Um, so pretty much everything computer. that we use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the reasons... <laughs> when, right, there, was, there was a thing of like, who's your, your uh, favourite scientist he passed thing? And there was, there was Tesla and Turing were like the top ones. There's me going, who do I want to vote for? And then I remember I only like Tesla because David Bowie played him <laughs> in, in the film. And they're going, yeah. oh yeah, that's probably... Yeah, that's that's probably yeah. I think that's for me, I like uh, Alan Turing and Leonardo da Vinci are my two favorite people, and yeah. uh, Turing wins hands down over da Vinci, uh, who was killed off in an episode of Futurama. There we go. Uh, oh yes, he was because of the da Vinci. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, <laughs> all ties it's, it's, it's Alan all Turing. Ties it and it's a really good version of Alan Turing being told. Mm-hmm. So if you are interested in early technology and World War Two stuff, because he played a heavy part in World War Two. In fact, he's he probably the most important person in World War Two on the Allies side. I'll give you Hitler and the creator of the Enigma machine are probably more important because if neither of those existed, Alan Turing wouldn't need to be there. But um yeah. Yeah, what he did on the ally side is probably more important than any other one person. Um, admittedly, obviously, you need all of the other people. I'm not saying that the other heroes were useless mm-hmm. without him. I'm just it saying... It was a team effort. Everyone's a winner. It was a team effort. Except but for the Germans. If there was a game of the, a person of the match, it would have been cheering. Um, <laughs> so the, the film's about that... Um, uh, and Turing is played by Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, I like him. Uh, who him. does a very good job. He was you my have. best friend forever. Yeah. And <laughs> Kira Knightley's in it as well. Oh, I like... Oh, wait, hang on. Which one was she? Padme or non-Padme? Non-Padme. <laughs> okay, right. From Love Always Actually and Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, one of those films I've seen. Um, it's unfortunately not the one that I should have seen. You haven't seen Love <laughs> Actually? <laughs> You know which one it was. I, I, I can understand not seeing Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, like, good. bits of it work and bits of it don't. Is that because you're a Richard Curtis fan? Well, have, no, you seen, have you seen About Time? About Time was great. I, like I did see About Time, yeah. That was great. Yeah. Rocks. Bearing in mind my situation going into that movie, uh, it wasn't great for me. But um, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For personal reasons, it didn't quite hit the right notes for me. But um, uh, if you didn't know, what is a time traveler? Yeah, true story. And that hurt a lot. Yeah. Aww. But yes, no. It uh, killed me. Uh, to be fair, it slayed me and all. I'm not saying. That. But yes, you've got an extra boost of Richard Curtis being a bastard. But Benedict. Uh, yes, but yeah, no. Uh, the film's great. It's a great interpretation of what. Sh- is and is often under-recognised as being the beginning of the modern age. Um, yeah. So if you are a person who likes that sort of stuff and likes a good drama based on real events, this is definitely something you should go and see. I kind of wish I could say it was my best film of the year, but I kind of prefer action-adventure better. And as has already been stated, there were an awful lot of good films this year. <laughs> so... It's the best drama I've seen, but I don't think I've seen that many dramas this year. <laughs> so, yeah, it's one of the best dramas I've seen uh, 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 ever, but unfortunately I do like an explosion or a love story or a comedy better. And um, yeah. 
it's not necessarily high on all of those. In fact, most of the jokes are at the fact that Alan Turing's autistic and can't tell jokes. Um, mm-hmm. But in a way that kind and of played feels by right. Benedict Cumberbatch. It's just like yeah. watching an episode of Sherlock. It is very much like looking uh, <laughs> Sherlock. If you could imagine, sh- if you want to watch an episode of Sherlock set in World War Two and based on real events, then this is the movie Sold. for you. Sold. I'm going to have to go see that. Now. So I saw that, and it was everything <laughs> I wanted it to be. And bearing in mind that I do love Alan Turing, and I did have such high hopes because of the cast, um, yeah, it didn't disappoint me. It did exactly what I wanted it to. And honestly, yes. it was. Mo- it was. I, I had set myself up to be disappointed by it, like because I was so looking forward to it. So yeah. um, the fact that it didn't disappoint means it was a great movie. Hooray! So, Expectations yeah. met. Right, so that's movies done. As Gerald Butler used to say, what's next? I said Gerald Butler. Why don't I meant to say, what's the president's name in the West Wing? Jed Bartlett. Oh, fucking Jed hell. Jed Bartlett, yes. <laughs> Ger- Gerald Butler is the guy who played the guy in 300. I... What's next? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Stop doing that. We need to hire a new secretary now. I shout everything. That was... I'm next. They, they, Jed Bartlett, Gerald Butler, they're very similar names in my stupid brain. So uh, what's yes. the next bit? What's the next? What's what's next? Um, the list there's a small topics? piece of board gaming news. Well, actually, it's a huge piece of news in board so I'll gaming. Do, I'll do, I'll, but we'll okay. do it. But I've got to do the intro. I've got to do the intro. I bought, I think we're gonna a new intro for board game. Game board. Remember that from IT Crowd. That was a good finale. Okay. Do you remember that? No. Uh, I think I do. Anybody? Vaguely. <laughs> Very vaguely. <laughs> I watched it recently. I was like, I have no memory of this. I remember was, the videos, the YouTube videos about game boarding. Uh, that's yeah. all I remember. That's pretty much the best bit, so it's fine. So, fantastic. And, and the line of, Anonymous can't hate me. I mean, Anonymous, I think. <laughs> that was almost an Irish accent as well, though. It's yeah. You're just going to put in a bad uh, Irish accent into every episode now, aren't, in, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I, everything we do. Um, so, yes. Really big board gaming news that probably dun, dun, dun. no one will care about. Sorry, dun dun da. That was my Irish dun the, dun da. The the two of the biggest board game companies are merging together. Uh, Fantasy Flight, and, and they're gonna make a monopoly. <laughs> they're not because Monopoly is a rubbish board game, and not. no. For when you make two two companies merge, they have to see if they're a monopoly or not. Fuck it, never mind. <laughs> Fantasy Flight and Asmodee. Oh my god, that's my bit. I'm leaving. That joke was too good. It wasn't. I'm going to go now. That joke was too good, and I'm going to go. So, Asmodee and Fantasy Flight are joining. Uh, Asmodee make a lot of popular Europe-based games. They're a French-based company, but they do lots of things like uh, Seventh Wonders. Uh, I think I even just got that name wrong. Uh, yeah. But... Um, <laughs> They do lots of things. I, I think they did Pandemic. Uh, they do a lot of the big Euro games. Uh, they're also... It's really hard to nail down what they've actually done because they're a publisher and a distributor. And as a okay. distributor, they have done everything. Mm-hmm. I think it's very hard to find a board game that they don't have their name on somewhere. Um, so because they, got a pen they in the do... <laughs> Because they do so much in the distribution world. So what they actually do as a producer is actually a lot more limited, but it's a bit hard to track down what's actually them. But most of what they have done are things like Formula Day and things... Lots of things that have appeared on Will Wheaton's tabletop. Like okay. that quality of... It's a, a, a modern classic. Um, so they do that. And then Fantasy Flight are big American guys... Uh, they do things like Twilight Imperium, uh, the most of the Star Wars stuff that's out at the moment, and there's some good Star Wars games coming out. Uh, X Wing's pretty good as well, uh, but yeah, so they do. They have lots of big brands. They're doing the Warhammer board game stuff, and they do other various bits and pieces. So, but they're probably the biggest american side of things oh they also do descent as well if people care about that but yeah so it's a really big american company a really big european company it's kind of teamed up what they say they want to do is kind of mostly stay separate but it should mean that we should get better 
the American game should come over to Europe and get organised play and things more over in Europe for Fantasy Flight games, which could be fun. Um, or it could mean that the two of them just sort of, you know, merge together and we just end up owning the world or something. I don't know. I feel like it could go... I feel like... the... That's the joke! That's the... No, I don't believe you didn't get that. I, I got it, I just didn't think it was good. That was genius. That's, it was I'm on a fucking roll today. Jokes. It's, it's no <laughs> Gary Delaney. It's the only reason I'm here, give it to me. Um, but yeah, no, I, f- I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Sorry, for the, for the many people who don't know Gary Delaney, uh, he's a comedian and he does one-line jokes. And my favourite of his jokes is, I could tell it was a Monopoly board from the word go. <laughs> Which is the, the, the joke there. That's I, I he does a lot I oh, no, I can't pick a favourite. I'm trying to think of the uh The many uh, wonderful my, Gary Delaney the, jokes. Gary Delaney is amazing. Google him, he'll have I, YouTube I, videos. I, yeah. I'm not going to do any more of his jokes because although I don't mind telling people Gary Delaney jokes, I feel wrong doing it on a podcast. Yep. It feels like <laughs> plagiarism and I don't want to plagiarize, so I seriously recommend uh tracking down some Gary Delaney stuff. Uh yep. And watching it being done properly. Yeah. Uh, by, by the master himself. By the master himself. Yeah. We're done. That's that. Cool. Done. Board game's done. What's next? Well, As I... Gerald Butler would scream before he kicked his secretary into a hole. <laughs> <coughs> well, I was going to talk briefly about comics. And then that's <laughs> the end of the news parts. News. And Good. Well, we this dis- do you want to do podcast comics? Is gonna turn a bit- yeah, I'll do some comic news. I recently read No Comics. That's the comic news. Oh, fantastic. Um, I wanted to talk <laughs> briefly about uh, Ravine. Uh, issue 2 finally came out. It's by my favourite artist. Um, and he does really highly detailed stuff. Um, it's... Uh, it, yeah, the artwork's beautiful. It's the sort of things where you could take any page and turn it into a poster quite happily. Just take off all of the text bubbles. Um so a sensationally good looking thing and I really like the universe he's made it's very fantasy with sort of magic and dragons Uh, it's not overly new but he's sort of put together a good world Um, it's called Ravine Uh, he's put the whole first issue for free as a PDF on his DeviantArt page so if you want to grab it oh and when I say issues this guy is writing an epic so his issues are 120 pages as opposed to the <laughs> classic 20 page. In fact, he has given, I think it's a 25 page preview of issue two as well. <laughs> and you know when you're there going, he's giving out a preview for a comic, which is longer than most comic books. Um, <laughs> I will warn you that when you read the first book, you will have to, oh, sorry, the first issue, you will have to read it twice because he does have a tendency to use words and then by the time you've finished the book you're like okay i think i understood what was going on let's reread it and i'll finally (laughs) and you'll go okay i understand what's going on now um so it suffers a little bit from that uh and it really is sort of feels like chapters in an epic but Mm. it does a lot of sort of feels like there's depth to the world in a way that uh other things like game of thrones just don't like it just has the 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 feeling of a world that's been thought out well and yeah so if you like fantasy comic books uh check it out uh yes if you search for ravine i'm sure you'll be able to find him on devant art and yeah the whole first thing is a, a pdf download and if not you can go to a comic book store and pick up the first and second books as books and uh, I really enjoyed it. Or you could just not you? bother. Yeah. But that was for people <laughs> any, who any aren't. I think if I think if you're a fan of comic books and fantasy, you should definitely check it out. I think if that sounds interesting, uh, it's up to you. Like it's it's not a must if you're not a fan of those things, but if you are a fan of those things, you should definitely check those out. But I enjoy those. And I also enjoy promoting comic books that have <laughs> nothing to do with the Marvel and DC universes. <laughs> because I don't like having to read things where everything is connected to a million other things. It just gets confusing. Like, this yeah, is a self-contained that... story. Yeah. 
Until it is a part of Iron Man in the next episode. I don't think that's going to happen. Like, Oh, you never know. He falls having... for a rift in space and time. I also like the fact that this guy agrees Opened with me. Opened by the me. Doctor and Batman. It's funny you say that. <laughs> I, I will come back to that in a second. But um, uh-uh. <laughs> uh, the... But yeah, the there was a, a funny thing where... Um, sorry, this guy agrees with me because he likes having an end to things and I like having an end to things, which is things that most comic books don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, so his series are often... So in this one, he said he's going to do something between 10 to 12 books, depending on how big the books get. Um, mm-hmm. But like he's got an end goal and sort of says, we'll finish there. And then he's also doing another goal. series where it's like... Uh, three eight-part comic books and that's classic sort of 20-page comic books and he's doing the three chapters each of each comic books and i like the fact that he's got a proper end goal and that's important to me rather than oh we'll keep going we'll keep going until something stops and it never does um until it's just until it it just goes and goes and goes until we go ah fuck i was gonna say there's an interesting character called um death head in who's a robot in the Marvel universe, uh-huh. um, but he's a bit interesting because his origin story—he's basically he was created by Marvel UK, and Marvel UK was mostly just doing crossover titles at the time, which means most of his screen time or page time is in Transformer comics, mm-hmm. and his origin story uh, is involves Doctor Who. And now he's still owned by Marvel, but they don't have the licenses for either Doctor Who or Transformers. Do you know when you're there going, how do you explain him? <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he was created by Tony Stark. Done. There we go. Iron Man 4 in the bag. Ding. But yeah, um, weird thing. So that, yes, that's my comic book review type thing. We're done with the news. We're done with the news. Woo! What's next? Well, it's As either... the guy who was in Gladiator once says... Who was that? Who played the guy in Gladiator? That wasn't Gerald Butler again, was it? Someone else. Oh, I don't know. I, th- there was me going, we're talking about Gladiator. Wasn't that a TV show? Um, <laughs> Do you feel the power of the Gladiator? No. Gladiators. <laughs> On my no, first whistle, you go. On my second whistle, that's you, the only no, thing I remember. No, you go on my it. first whistle. You remembered it wrong. Yeah. <sighs> right. I was a kid. Um, you better well, we that either that have he has what, all the plans. I don't. We we, I don't we either have what's boring slash interesting bit. That wasn't what's boring slash interesting bit. No. Oh I wanted God. to talk about perspectives and storytelling, but we can still push that. If I I can't see what the time is. It's have, one twenty-five recording, including the opening faff. Okay. We're sorting stuff out. So, do you want to just run straight on and do the well, podcast? My plan, or? My, my plan was to be an hour-long podcast. So, maybe we so do you just want to do the the, the Q and A? Um, we'll do, we do a Q and A. Yet again, push what's boring slash interesting bit. <laughs> this is going to make it really interesting when it turns up. Or really boring. Uh, that's the reason why it's called what's boring slash interesting bit. It's because some people will find it really boring and some people will find it really interesting. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's a 50-50 split. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect more people will find it boring than interesting, but those who will find it interesting will really appreciate it. Yeah. The, only those. But o- Everyone but, but, else. But only like, those. It's like when James May goes off on a bit of a rant. It is. It is exactly that part. It's the, uh, I will find this interesting and a small handful will love it, but a lot of people will sort of want to skip it. That's why I always save it for the end, because whenever we get to actually doing it, it will go on at the end as a, okay, you can turn off now if you think this, if you find this boring, but if you find this interesting, we will, uh, you can yeah. have that and go, oh, that was very interesting. We'll fast, we can zoom through it. We can just zoom through it. I'm like a dad zoom button. <laughs> And there you yeah. be done. Are you underwater while recording it? Go. Right. Question. That's what makes it from, interesting. From Lucas Alvarasson. Are you French? Ooh, no. Me. No. <laughs> no. Not at all. Confirm. 
I confirm that it is. I I am yeah. not French. <laughs> Can you confirm that though? I uh, I'm fairly confident. I have a lot of family who lives in France, but they're all British Ooh, and moved to France. Like French, you to me. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, I I don't have the 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 yeah. I have family all born in uh, England and then spread out across uh, Europe. So that happened. But yeah, no roots in France at all. You know when people ask questions and they try to be funny and they just come across as irritating. Oh yeah. My Twitter mentions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just just one word. Hey, here's a random thing. I'll play it. How do I get to be as sarcastic as you? Ask Imian Selvon. Just keep doing what you're doing and I bet you'll get it one day. Uh, yeah, practice. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. That was sarcasm. I don't really care. The, the, <laughs> the... <laughs> what are you... Oh my god, I'm reading this. Um, what's your least favourite episode of Sherlock. I'm re-watching Sherlock at the moment. I don't have time for movies. I have time for Sherlock. Um... They're practically movies anyway. Oh, they are. They're an hour and a half long each. Yeah. There's, like, each series, there are two amazing episodes and one I just don't quite care for. But unfortunately, the one I don't quite care for with Sherlock is better than 90% of the rest of TV. Which is a downside. Um, I, I, I'm trying I, to think. I have issues with Sherlock because I like detective pieces and it's an awful detective show there's the the mysteries in them are never set up very well and never come through and i can't quite get my head around the idea of so when i watch doctor who i expect it to be a crap plot and i just Mm. watch it to have fun and so i have fun and i can't quite get into that mindset because sherlock is wonderfully fun like the plot that sorry the uh the language of the scripting and the performance is all very fun. Um, but there's no actual detective plotness to it. And often when you go afterwards, you go, not only was there no discovery there, it also didn't make sense. Like things like the... So I think my favourite episode is one of the one where they did lots of little mysteries where the master, basic, not the master. The master, I do. It's Moriarty so, just gives same away. Thing. They're fucking interchangeable. Uh, it's just, just gives more away Doctor answer Who after like answer it. of yeah. this is what we're going to do. Okay, I'll give away this answer. Oh, I'll give you this, and because you've got the theme of that, and you go, so he gave away all of that because he wanted something. Oh no, he didn't. Oh, was it just so that he could get Sherlock home somewhere where he could kill him? Oh no, it wasn't. So why did he give up all of his people who had paid him money to do things? And I don't think he even got paid money for this, which also then begs the question, why did other things happen? Like, the first question, the, the, the study in pink even has that kind of, you did it because Moriarty told you to. Why did Moriarty tell you to do it? Because if he's a consultant for criminals, why is he paying someone to kill people? That makes no sense. Uh, other than evil maniacal plan and Sherlock wasn't even a big name then so it wasn't even like he was doing it to pick at Sherlock Um, so that didn't make sense and then which one of these two uh, people So sorry which of these two pills do people take we never got told that so we don't know which one was supposedly the correct and the right answer Um, in fact overall nothing was explained um but unfortunately, then also, Hand of the Baskervilles, which although structurally is sound, was also an awful episode. So the whole thing is flooded with... If, once I start picking at Sherlock, I find it so hard to pick something see, that I, I like, watch... let alone something that... The problem is, I watch Sherlock as a comedy drama. Yeah. And as a comedy drama, Sherlock is one of the best things on TV. I, I agree that if you watch it as a Sherlock, if you watch it as a comedy drama, it's wonderful. It yeah. just annoys me that it's trying to be Sherlock Holmes because Sherlock Holmes is supposed to be a proper detective with proper structure and is one of the few proper detective uh, series uh, in books which is done properly. And um, yeah, it's a pity that, yeah. Yeah, but it's, I'll it's stop such a great. It's such a great comedy drama. I don't give a shit. 
It is. It's, it really is. That's 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 the uh, the biggest problem with Sherlock is it's so good at being something that's not quite Sherlock that I just yeah. love it. I I, I agree I just, with that. I adore it. It's amazing. I, it, I it's really a great show. It's so it. gifable. It's so. Um, <laughs> It, it's such a great sort of fun to watch. It's very entertaining. It I mean, you're not watching best, it being bored. It's like, some of the best directing and editing I have ever seen. In a yeah, TV it's show, got great pacing. Oh, that was something I want to say about Doctor Who. The directing of that finale. What was wrong? What yeah, happened I remember there? there being some shoddy there, there bits There was a lot of, of dodgy there. bits, but my, the least favorite one was the two guards standing next to Missy who just did nothing. Missy's escape will stand here. Missy's doing this thing. Do nothing. And then they got killed. The director should have gone, you should probably point guns or something. There was, there was a lot yeah. of... You probably that have to is... pay them more if you, if you did that. <laughs> I won't point guns for more than ten minutes. And uh, they'd already... Yeah. Um, the thing is, though, given Peter Capaldi's history, you could probably put a swear box on set and make <laughs> enough money to... Um, to fund the entire to show. To fund the entire show. So, um, to answer your question, <laughs> how do the Baskervilles I pick? Because it's just one that doesn't really have... It's more horror than anything, and I just didn't enjoy it. And I refuse to pick a worst episode because I judge it on things that... It, I feel it wrong. should be just, judged on, but it's not just, fair just, to. Because I, I'm it's saying not you're wrong it. about this, but the exact reason I don't like Doctor Who at the moment is it's currently not the thing I like Doctor Who to be. Yeah. Because I, I like Doctor Who to be an adventure fun thing, so... Yeah. And I, I say it again. The thing, uh, but I don't think Doctor Who's doing a very good job of not being anything else. Whereas, at least with Sherlock, I can, I can sit there and go, it's not well, being Sherlock face... Holmes, a mystery piece, but it is being a damn good uh, uh, comedy drama. Yeah. It is doing yeah. a brilliant job of being a, a comedy drama. It is. It deserves awards for being a comedy drama. A comedy drama. It does not yeah. deserve awards for being a very good detective show. And it's a bit annoying that they decided to call it after the world's greatest detective. In fact, the foundation of detective books. You know, um, it's really good mysteries. I'm watching. I'm, I'm watching Desperate Housewives. That is a great mystery show. They do mysteries properly in that show. Uh, I do not watch Desperate Housewives. I, it was, would I, you I, recommend I, it to me? Too. I would. I would recommend it to you because it is it's it's girly enough for you to like it, and also like the first series is pretty much one solid mystery. Second series dips because they forget their mystery show and just sort of do the resolution of the mystery, like the the aftermath of it, and then they go and they sort of have another little mystery they don't really care about, and then in the series two they're like, right, let's crank this up. They jump forward six months, and then stuffs happened in that point, and we they don't tell all what's happened in there, and, and they've got mysteries going fun. on. And then, so after they, that's series three, and then at the end, it's either that one or the end of the next one, they jump five years, and loads has changed. And that's okay. where I am at the moment. And it's, 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 it's fun, it's genuinely funny, it has great character writing, it's just, and it's a great mystery show, like, I genuinely care about the mysteries, and it, they sort of become half of the focus. Well, that does uh, Also, like also, I will point this out, no one in the cast is safe. They kill off more people than 24. <laughs> Seriously, it's just like, here's... Oh, he's dead. Oh, and another reason to love it, Nathan Fillion was in the series I just finished watching, and he may be in more of it if he's not dead right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, um, I do like the girly TV shows. I, I, I had a funny situation it. when I was in... Um, when I was at uh, uh, Summer in the City this year, um, and I was talking with a collection of girls. Uh, I think most were either... I think a lot of them were sort of people who talk about sex and stuff on YouTube and uh, things mm-hmm. like that. The British versions of Sex Plus and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the people I was talking to, and they're all talking about uh, Gossip Girl. And they're, there go- and they're there talking about sort of season six or so. And they're saying, oh, I'm sorry, you probably can't catch up. And I said, yeah, it's because I stopped watching after season four. And they all laugh. And I'm like, yeah, I really like the the Serena and Dan relationship. And they <laughs> then suddenly had that double take where it was like, you weren't making a joke there. <laughs> you actually <laughs> did watch four seasons before you. <laughs> and there's me like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, it was also I, quite I, fun because it was the group of people who normally do the um, do lots of the everyone should be nice and not and, and uh, we should treat everyone equally sexually. And it was nice for them all to do the double take when I watched the girly show. Hmm. This is why I watch stuff that's not intended for me because occasionally you'll find some gold. 
You find some. You'll find something that if it's even if you're not the intended audience, you might find something you really enjoy. You do, or something unspeakably horrible like Sex in the City, which is one of the worst things I've ever had to sit through. Dear God, kill me if I ever have to watch that again. Uh, I've never watched Sex in the City. I did watch the prequel TV show to Sex in the City, which was quite good. Okay, um, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Sex and the City I don't understand, okay? So it's, it's a show that's primary target is women, mostly starring women, and it's really sexist towards women. Like, they are, they are one-note, shoe-obsessed characters, the lot of them. And I cannot understand how you can do that at yeah, all. Yeah, well, in the prequel, I watched it because half the cast was from sci-fi, and... Um, the whole thing was set in the 80s, which meant it just had the amazing soundtrack of <laughs> sort of uh, 70s and 80s. And then, it, it, yeah, it just had that such a great soundtrack. Everything was vibrant fashion. And it was mostly about a girl trying to become a reporter and trying to learn to balance school life with going forward. Uh, so it wasn't as sort of boy orientated. And yeah. In fact, there was relatively little sex in it, and <laughs> only half of it was set in New York, so it wasn't very much sex in the city. Um, yeah. But it was very good fun, and it was done by the guy who does lots of girly programs, but also does Chuck. So um, I like oh, his I stuff. Oh, I like Chuck. I yeah. like Chuck. Chuck was good. I miss that. Consid- I miss that considering he does, so because, considering we know he's a huge nerd, and mm-hmm. he also does things like the OC Gossip Girl... Uh, and the prequel to Sex in the City, the Carrie Diaries. He may be a parallel universe you, yes. But but <laughs> I'm just there going, considering that also girly TV's making really good sci-fi right now, like the hundreds being really good at the moment and stuff, mm-hmm. that I'm also there going, I kind of hope he's g- given a budget to make a girly sci-fi, because he would make a great girly sci-fi program. Because mm-hmm. he does the girly shows well. We know he's a nerd. Like... He, I, I would like to see sort of the Chuck version of S- Star Trek. That would be <laughs> brilliant. Can't be Guardians of the Galaxy, surely. That's something I've still not seen. As a I'll TV series. As, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I would like to. I, I would like that. So if you okay. happen to have a budget somewhere and you're a TV company, you know, go with that. Yeah. Or Firefly. Ah. Sort mm-hmm. of like that. Maybe. We may, we may have admitted that we'd like girly things too much. Yay! It's 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 a it's what I recommend. Desperate Housewives. You can pick up the episodes for very cheap. As well, well, if you like DVDs, which I do, I don't. I assume they're on uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime or something. I, I, I'm not a fan. I like owning the DVDs, but probably yeah. God knows. I don't know how many of that stuff works. That's all. That's all magic space technology to me. I don't know. I I have started using these uh, just because they're so good for binge watching things. Um, yeah. So, lots of things I'm yeah I'm watching on those systems now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, okay, I'll look for them. I'm, look, I'm reading through the questions. Keep talking. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the question we just answered? Favorite episodes of Sherlock. <laughs> we went quite off of the topic there. Oh, it's because we went on some mysteries. Desperate Housewives is a mystery. Show. Oh yeah. Best Lovely. mystery, best mystery books ever written. Harry Potter. Oh, absolutely. Because Harry Potter is all about the mystery. Like you never get to the end of a Harry Potter book. I mean, th- it's that excitement when you get to the end of the Harry Potter book, and you're like, I did not see that coming. Except for seven and five. <laughs> seven and five are not mystery books, but six uh, and one to four are all mystery books because you get to the end and you're like what's happening and oh i didn't see that was going to happen um yeah it, they're I also wonderful mystery. dramas and comedy books and harry potter's generally just good at everything i, but, I think um, i made a mistake reading out the people's name i think i've read the name of the or, or this person's asked two questions that i answered oh my god i did this person's asked two questions and i picked you again you are the best at questions uh, Imani Selvon is okay. your name for the next question the final question of this podcast I like this question because of it's the way it's written it's double points now double points I don't for know this if... question uh, possibly oh no it's gone Twitter what the fuck hang on 
<laughs> it's when it's budged up and down it does that when because it's adding new stuff to the top because I've been ridiculously spammed it's right at the bottom so I want to get it before it disappears oh shit where's that gone quick dance for them D entertain them I'm dancing but they can't see okay I found it I found it what's the saying dance like nobody's watching I literally just did. <laughs> <laughs> right there, this is a question that I believe is like a multiple question so it's where do you find yourself in 10 years where you find yourself in 10 months, where you find yourself in 10 days or 10 hours. Sort yep. of a see what your life is like. But the way they've written it is, where do you find yourself is 10 years, 10 months, 10 days and 10 hours. That's like really specific. <laughs> I want to work out when that'll be. So in, in okay, 10 hours would be, uh, what's your time? We'll do it, we'll do it GMT. What is it currently? You're one? It, in GMT, my, it is just gone yeah, one, one, yeah. Okay, so my computer says it's one. Uh, so 10 hours would be uh, about uh, no, uh, 11. 11. <laughs> 11. 11. 11 p.m. 10 days would make this the 28th. Uh, yeah, 20, 28th. And then 10 months. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, fuck. I've shut up. I'm scrolling along my calendar. 1, <laughs> 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Should be September. Yep, September the 28th. Hang on, I'm clicking it. September 28th, 2015. Oh, no. 2025. Where am I going to find myself? September 28th. 2025. September. What September? Um, That's actually when, like, sort of the, the late, the later movies. I will be seeing Avengers Four. Round about then, most likely, maybe Avengers Five. M maybe. Um, which stars all the Pokemon, and nobody knows why. <laughs> did it's ten years in the future. I don't know, because, like, that's sort of the right sort of period to be, um... um cars, jetpacks! Well, no, I was going to say that's summer in the city on Edinburgh are both August, oh, yeah. September. So, I don't know, is it going to... I, I may be at summer in the city if it's a late, if it's gone a bit later. Oh, no, that's the beginning of September rather than the end of September. It'll be Fringe, Edinburgh Fringe, surely. We might be running a show. No, that's Edinburgh in Fringe. August. That's we could be August. doing this podcast live. It might have moved. It's 10 years' time. The... Yeah, but I doubt it's going to move because that's it's done because that's the summer break. It's the only time when only in Scotland where only half the days are raining. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> only, only half. Fuck off. It rained every day I was there. <laughs> All, All right. of them. Um, it's the only day when they have some days where it doesn't rain. Um, sorry, some times when it doesn't rain. <laughs> Most days you get a bit of rain, but, you know, only for a small period. Uh, it, the weather system in, in Scotland during summer is very um, ADHD. <laughs> it's like, I can't make up my mind! Um, yeah, I reckon in bed, because we said it's like 11 Yeah, it's just be because be assuming I mean Amer I mean England at the time, if not um, on a night shoot you know of what? a movie. Wow, that that would also be ten years after the date that Marty McFly travels to in Back to the Future Two, because that's next year. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's so scary. Where's our hover cars? There's been a lot of hoverboard technology going up on Kickstarter this last year. There, there's one that works. Tony Hawk's had a video on his channel. Hang on. Yeah, there's been Hawk a... or Tony Hawk's. Which is the comedian and which is the skater? Uh, Tony Hawk is the skater, I believe. Uh, oh, I've just bought a new. No, yeah, Tony Hawk is the skater because it's Tony Hawk's, as in it belongs to him, games. I just found. I like flea markets. You get to buy cheap PS2 games. But yeah, so Tony Hawk is the skater. Tony Hawk's is the comedian. English yeah. comedian. Who w was on Red Dwarf as the warm-up guy, and then oh, did yeah. various other pieces, uh, did uh, made various cameo cameos in the early series, and lots of um, uh, thingy. Whose line is it anyway? The UK version, probably. Yes, it's true. And he I also did the, the uh, backpack round island with a fridge. Um, with a fridge. Yeah, that was the he he did a. A book which was he wanted to backpack round island with a fridge because he heard someone did backpacking with a weird object and so they said I'll try and do it with a fridge and see if anyone would actually go for it and he did and there's a whole book written about it <laughs> and on that note <laughs> of bizarre pub trivia 
we are going to end this podcast here. Thank you very much for listening. And... Ta-ra. What says goodbye? Yeah, done. Bye.